come together. It always comes yes. together, yes, whatever the weather. How's everybody doing today? Aaron, you are back in the building. Am I tan? You are? You <laughs> might be. Are you tan? Yes. I am tan. I'm very golden right now. Golden. Everybody, everybody saw it. Living my life like a golden. Beautiful on Facebook oh, and Twitter. Thank you. Check out our thank link page, the Franklin Crocker Show. Oh, um, you're so sweet. I yeah. what? Well, I was in Italy for two weeks. Okay. Best time ever. So I'd highly recommend. Best time ever. Yeah, but I'm happy to be back in studio. Last week I was on Instagram Live. I went really well. No, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of a disaster, but uh, what are you, you going to do? Hey, that's, what, that's what we do. What we thanks, went uh, thanks, everybody, for being so patient with us last Yeah, no, no, what it was. It was, um, it was an experiment. It was an experiment. Uh, experience. Yes, experience. Yes, experience. That experience. didn't really work the way we wanted to, <laughs> um, but we will uh, next time make it a little... It wasn't even us, though. It wasn't us. No. It was the other person. Yes, it was TJ. TJ, TJ, TJ had a lot of people. Yeah, he had a lot of people. DMing him, which was interfering with his... With his, his fault. Fault. <laughs> he pop, he's a popular dude. He's a popular dude. He had a lot of DMs rolling in. And it was interfering, which, you know, hey. But the, song, but the song was dope, though. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but it, we, was, it was fun nonetheless. Nonetheless, it was fun. Yeah. You guys were you guys were all remote. I was here, yeah. and uh, we had a good time with you. So, so, recap, recap. Talk to us what happened last week. We're going to do a recap. So, real quick, before we get into our special, special guest, yes. uh, we're going to do a real quick recap for the month of July. So, the first week we had Carlos and Emma. You both were here for that. Carlos and Emma from Toronto. <laughs> that was dope. All right. That was, that yeah. Was. Uh, and then we did this song. What was it? Uh, We're going to make it. And I was over there doing my little reggae dance. That was a good time. Oh. You were you were here for that, Aaron? Weren't you? No, I was not. You weren't I here for Carlos and Emma. I was listening on the. Ooh, phone. yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Ready? Thank you. I I actually paid for Wi-Fi on the plane over to Rome just to listen to you guys. I didn't know. I thought you were here for that. That's dope, yo. Okay. Yeah. You you dedicated. Yeah. Number one fan, huh? Number one friend, of course. <laughs> and then week two, we had uh, our boy Don Brown and Maya, his, his daughter. Son, his yes, daughter, Maya, his daughter, which and, was adorable. Along with your son, with my son, my son was here too. Yeah, they actually had we had the little kids, uh, nine year old and ten year old, get busy. They took over the show for a little bit. Uh, big shout out to Dom too. He was just actually on um, Good Morning. Was it, no, I think it was AM Buffalo. AM Buffalo, there it is. AM Buffalo. Uh, he was doing the theme song for uh, for the Buffalo Bills because. They're back in training camp right now. It is. Grab it up. Tis he did the tell season. us that right on the show. Yeah, and he actually has a new one this year. I guess he said he's been doing it since 2018, I believe. 2017. Yeah. All right. So he's these. Bars, folks. Bars. Yeah, bars. <laughs> That's that Canadian stuff, bars. And then last week we had our boy TJ Hickey from Boston, uh, the internet phenomenon, uh, the. What was that mic? He, the, the, he didn't have the mic, though. Did he, did we, did he no, have the mic? He didn't, he didn't, he didn't use the mic. mic. I want him to yeah. use the mic. Oh, uh, anyways, still we so had the. He showed us the two different mics. Yeah, he showed us two different mics, but we had the, uh, the phenomenon. But now, right now, we're gonna talk about our two special, special feature guests. <laughs> we have Electric. we have Neff and we have Chandra, both from Sneak Vibe. And what's up with y'all today? What's up? What's up? We're oh. here. We're here. Hello. I know Chandra ain't shy. I'm from Sneak Vibe and Neff. Runs Betty Croc Entertainment. Betty Croc. Puts on amazing shows, and um, I've been actually working under her um, because she's been putting on amazing events where you know we interview. I interview artists, and then she basically um, uh, curates these talents. Okay. Together. So How long y'all been doing that for? Um, I've been doing it for. It's been a while. My first show was back in 2013. Mm -hmm. And then I took a hiatus for a little while because I got kids and okay. stuff like that. And then I decided to get back around six months ago. So for six months, it's been constant and consecutive. Dope, okay. dope. That's what's up, man. So it's called, what's the name again? My, yeah, well, it's Betty Croc Entertainment. And Betty Croc Entertainment. I'm, I'm laughing at that. Say croc. That's no, no, be, that's my nickname. My nickname is Croc, but when I was growing up, because my last name was Crocker, um, I got teased all around because of Betty Crocker. You know, everybody thought that was my aunt or family member, but realize people don't realize that Betty Crocker was wasn't a real person. It was made up just to sell fake goods. Betty Crocker was not real. No. Yeah. So now you know. No. See, this is what we this is what we do. I dig in the crates, baby. 
Ooh, Ooh. yeah. That's true. I am the real Betty Crocker. So you are the real Betty Crocker. So you are the, you're the real Betty Crocker. What's up? So you the real one. Yo. Oh, see? Oh my gosh. I can see this is your underlying statement now. Yeah. The real Betty Crocker. Yeah, Buffalo I, got a lot to offer. You the I real Betty Crocker. I named it Betty Crocker because I was I'm like a curator. Like I create like. Like food, like you know how. Okay. Oh, the recipe, so, like, right? Yeah. A little bit of this, whipping a little bit of that. Yeah, okay. So, like, yes, I yeah, love like it. Yeah, like the metaphor of whipping in the kitchen, like cooking up things. Like I always got an idea, and I always bring it to life. So. Mm. In the kitchen, is whipping like yeah. a stir fry. In the kitchen, <laughs> whipping like a stir fry. Okay, that's what's up, y'all. Yeah. I love, I love it though. I, you know what's crazy though? When you hear the story of how somebody got to a name or where they arrived from, it's pretty dope. And what your story, that's a dope story. I, I love it. And love now we just realize you are the original Betty Crocker. So. I know. That's You're the real. You, you heard it here. I heard it here first. Yeah. Buffalo. Yeah. I'm the Franklin the drop. Crocker. <laughs> yes. Drop. Drop the mic. And then, Chandra, you and I were talking earlier, and it's funny because we're talking about this now again. Um, you know, Buffalo has a lot to offer. And yeah. you're in these streets. I mean, oh, when I look online, you in these streets for real. Yeah. And, you know, the one thing I told you earlier uh, before the show started is that sign I keep talking about that needs to re get repainted of keeping Buffalo a secret. <laughs> you really don't. I, I don't like that sign. I don't, I don't like yeah, it. Because yeah. Buffalo is, there's a lot of talent here in Buffalo. Yeah. But yet we do keep it a secret because people only know Buffalo, in my opinion, for four things. The Buffalo Bills, the Sabres, Snow, and Chicken Wings. That's it. We have a lot, we have, and you talked about it earlier, we have a lot of great local talent. Yeah. I'm yeah. talking about local. So we had we had AI, oh, oh. we had AI the anomaly on the show. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Oh. I mean, I'm talking yeah. about fire, fire. Yeah. I mean, I mean it, can I just say, yes, okay, please. So I'm a huge fan of her. But okay. My dad, so a lot of sneak vibing has to now look back at the foundation of my dad because he had a Christian hip hop platform called Gospel Party. He still runs it now. Oh, dope. But he was covering underground Christian rap artists in Buffalo. It's such a niche group, but he was covering it. So he has interviews of AI from like six, ten years ago Ooh. that are amazing. Um, but it's crazy because I knew of her, but now knowing her as an adult and seeing how amazing she is and the growth she has, and she's really a star. She goes to other places yeah. she and people she's like huge. respect her, but I feel like here, like they still need to understand just how great of an artist she is. So Amazing artist. Quality. When mm -hmm. it comes when I when I think of a quality artist, I automatically think of it. I oh, said yeah. she's, she's a clean a, version. She's a superstar. I said she's a female Ooh. clean version of Kendrick Lamar. Her she got bars, she got metaphors. I mean she double entendres. It's a yeah. great story. Yeah. And then it all comes and her all her, her whole album is from her life. Yeah. It's yeah. like you can you can hear the struggle, the pains that she went through. It's like, yo, when somebody could translate that into music the way she does yeah. hands down yeah. she's dope um, but again she's just one of the examples of yeah. some yeah. dope artists here in Buffalo because there's a lot more there's so many. Um, you know next month which is a couple of days from now uh, we have the Buffalo Music and Art Festival yes. Yes. coming up at and the yes. end of you are going to be there as well yeah, so we're going to be taking over one of the stages for an hour I'm dope. super excited shout out to Lindsay for putting Sneak Vibin' on. Uh, last year we had a table and we were interviewing artists and it went amazing. Actually, we're gonna be dropping some footage that never dropped from last year. So I'm really excited about that. Okay. But, uh, we're taking over the stage this year. We're gonna have the, the youngins out, the young, mm -hmm. you know, some young artists that people need to get hip to. So I'm really looking forward to it. But you know, it, it's gonna be a time. It's gonna be a good time. I really love what he's doing. We need a festival that really brings so many yeah. musical artists together because there's such a rich music community, no matter if it's rock, pop, hip hop, but to see all of them come together is great. Oh, that, 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 that's really dope. It's, yeah. And this festival is top notch. Yes. Tickets quality, are on yeah. sale now. It's August 28th, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Two to nine. Two to nine. Two to nine, right? Two to nine. Two to nine. <laughs> <laughs> and we are actually a media sponsor. Yeah, we'll be there. So we'll be there. Oh, we're a media sponsor too. Yeah, oh, so we just we're gonna, we're gonna have we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna rock out. We're gonna rock yeah. it out. Yeah, we're yeah, gonna we're rock super out. Pumped. I'm looking forward to it. So Chandra, tell us your story. How did you start all this? Like, oh we we know gosh. about your so we we I, now I heard a little bit earlier because it obviously started from with your father, and you're kind of like you know you 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 went in your own lane here though. Yeah, yeah. So let me say that my parents they're from New York City, so my dad is from the Bronx, so my mom is from like Yonkers and Rochelle area. Why yo? My mom, my, yeah, my mom grew up like with Heavy D and all of them. Like she was friends mm -hmm. with them, go to shows. My dad, like he would see DJ Master Flash play like in the yard. Mm -hmm. He would be playing like um, 
So they have so much hip hop history just together, mm -hmm. and then they became Christians. And then, like, but they still loved hip hop, so they started like getting into Christian hip hop. My parents are like actually cool when I think about it. <laughs> just when I think about it. Like, when I was younger, it was normal to me for us to like go out. We'll go out, give food away. My dad would be playing Christian hip hop music, and they would be doing ministry. And my mother would preach, and my dad would be playing hip hop music, and they'll bring all these young kids to church, like to you know just help them and support them. And I think about that now, and I'm like, dang, they took something unconventional. Yeah. And, you know, at that time, churches really wasn't rocking with it. Like, what nah, are they doing? Uh, they were like, they like were against the grain and did what they did. So now I think about it, I'm like, man, they were revolutionary. So that's um, dope. Now, but I think that has passed down to me. I kind of took the foundation that my dad ha had and the structure he had subconsciously and kind of created it for myself. So like for a long time, I didn't really have a lot of pride in Buffalo. I kind of was like grew up in like a small community mm -hmm. um, and you know, church kid too, grew up in church. So I didn't really have that much exposure. But then when I went to college at Buff State, yeah. and I was a journalism major there, <laughs> I was exposed to so many talented people, talented people of color too, especially growing up in like Amherst. I didn't see so much diversity and that just inspired me. And it was like a progression. First I realized I loved writing and I was writing for the record newspaper at uh, Buffalo State. Okay. And then I would start doing internships and stuff like that. And then fast forward, I kind of went through like a couple different phases and realized how much I love music. And I started a blog while I was at Buff State called Sneak Vibe. And it was basically, I was just like a woman that really cared about music and I realized sometimes our voices wasn't heard. So it was just me sharing my opinions <laughs> about music. And then, like, I think in 2017, 2016, I really started have the idea of pivoting it to, like, covering local artists because um, I got the opportunity. I wrote for the public for a little bit for, like, oh, almost a year. Oh, I used to love the public. Yeah, I would do, like, little, like, previews of shows and stuff like yes. that. Yes, So okay. every once in a while, they would let me pick out a show, like, find a show. So when I started finding shows, I started going to them. And I remember one of the first hip-hop shows I went to was Samus. Um, she's, I think she's from Rochester or Ithaca. She's like, she has a huge cult following now. But she came here and did a show and I was like hooked. When I saw her rapping, I'm like, yo, like, I never thought about that there could be a hip hop community here. So I started going to shows and it slowly just gradually, and, and, and I had to kind of get my mind in the phase of like, do this, like do this, I had to push myself. It took like a year for me to actually push myself to do it. And then I created Sneak Vibe and Page and like, 2018 like the Instagram page and pivoted the blog to not really covering like national artists and just my opinions but yeah. really focusing on Buffalo artists. Okay. Which is dope. Yeah. Just dope. Yeah, we, we need more of that and, and it's I so needed. Yeah, and I get so yeah. needed. I get, you have really carved out you, a niche for yourself. You definitely there. have. And I get criticized okay. by this one over here all the time. <laughs> what does that mean? That I need to do more of that as well. And I and I try to. But you know, base back It's a lot of work. Yeah. But back to the conversation I had earlier with you, um, you know, one of my goals is to get that sign down that says keep Buffalo secret, but allow bigger artists to understand how creative Buffalo is and to get them to come to Buffalo, to get these artists to, to, to you know, actually do a duet or, you know, feature one of the Buffalo artists on their albums. Collaborate. Collaborate. I mean, that's what I'm, that's my goal. It so. only makes us stronger. Right. It, it really does, and you know, using the my my father's or my my father's my uncle's history and you know his name, trying to get some of those people to say, okay, you know, we'll take a shot, we'll take a chance, because Buffalo is is super creative. Oh, I mean, whether it's art, what, I mean, this is a this is a music and art festival. Not only just music wise, we're creative, but in art, we're very creative as well. You know, we talked about some people, some local people earlier as well, and. Uh, you know, we just gotta blow Buffalo up. We gotta make this thing nice and big and sneak vibing is definitely She's definitely doing a good job with that. And way. that's why I really have to give credit to Neff. Like sometimes I call Neff like my OG because when I first came into like the Buffalo scene, mm -hmm. I didn't really see a lot of like women like in the scene. Just in the hip hop in the industry, it's like very male do uh, dominated. Correct. But I would like see like Neff on Instagram, like low key, like people shouting her, but I'm like who is this chick that everybody knows? <laughs> and she was so low key, like I would see you every once in a while at event. And I like, she doesn't know this, but I would like suck her knees, like, who is this person? I need to know who this is. But it's so crazy because when we actually met, like we clicked like this. See, those and are she the best like, kinds of friendship. Yes, too. yes, but um, she has like taught me a lot about kind of like the roots and where things have started. Like she was here for this like new generation of hip hop artists that have really carved their way out. The first classes, the Cooley Highs, Ooze Games, the uh, 
teapot, 14 trap doors, like uh, there's a whole wave of artists that's been doing this for maybe like the last 10 to 8 years mm -hmm. that have created their own scene and, and culture and space. So I feel like you could talk about that a little more. Yeah, yeah let's, let's get that. Let's yeah, get that. Dude, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Like, the flowers no, are well deserved. Yes. Um, yeah, I've been around for about 10 years. Okay. Um, like I said, my first show was in 2013. Um, when I was in high school, I met a guy by the name of Jordan, and um, I was a creative in high school too. Like I used to make my own magazines. I used to go to concerts all the time. Like I was in love with Bow Wow, so like he was my first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Bow Weezy. Okay. He was my first experience of concerts. <laughs> my mother used to make sure, like she knew how much I loved him. She would make sure I traveled, mm -hmm. at least you know, in the eastern. You right, know, right, Ohio right, right. and all that. She would make sure I was there. Shout out to my mom. <laughs> but um, when I went to my first Bow Wow concert, I felt, I don't know, it was something different. Like, I loved Bow Wow, but, like, the concert itself, like, just gave me a feeling. And um, I started to realize that I was, like, in love with the the way it was ran, like, what was going on. Like, I was Ooh. more interested in that. Behind the scenes. Okay, dope. So as I got older, I started to realize the artists that I was fans of, I started to be more of a fan of the people behind them. So I'm like, do you like the background? Oh, like, are you the business person? The production yeah. side. Yeah. But I always loved artists, though, because I always was in love with something that, like, I couldn't do. I always, like, that's amazing that you could sing like that. It's amazing you could draw like that. I, and I always wanted to be that person that put you to the forefront. So when I met my homeboy, my brother, um, Jordan, he introduced me to a group of hippie creative kids and I just could not stay from away from them and when I started to realize how talented they was and I knew that I liked the business aspect of it I had I wanted to represent them so I went from being a show goer to a show thrower and I had to like and I was new in the scene like they were already doing music so when I came around they knew me as a show goer and they they loved me like we love you always at our shows always supporting us so when I threw out the idea that I wanted to actually start throwing shows for them, they was like, okay, because they never seen me actually do the footwork. Yeah. So I had to, like, gain their trust. Mm -hmm. So I had to start, like, doing footwork, a and r and people's projects, like, okay, sitting in the studio with them. You should do that. Okay, you should put that person on it. And they would be like, okay, Neff. And when I started gaining their trust, they just started doing shows for me, started asking me more, asking me to manage, asking me to a and r direction, artist development, so I started to do a lot for the local artists, and then one day I just was like, you know what I gotta do, I gotta do something of my own, okay. so that I can have a platform, I don't have to ask nobody else to put them on my platform, Got it. so it wouldn't be so hard to have to like, be like, oh, could we use your stage for this, like, or could we do this, it was more so like, I have this already for y'all, so like, let's just go, so like, that was my goal, so now I have Spotlight Series, and I'm working with Chandra, and it's once a month where I provide a platform for artists to tell their stories. So you get a live interview with Chandra. She is the best mm -hmm. interviewer. It's so amazing because she be have every single show that we've done so far. The silence in the room and the interest, because her questions are so good, oh. is amazing. Incredible. You know what I'm saying? Because people fall in love with the artist because of their story a lot of the time. But if you don't understand their background, you just listen to the music. But when you start to understand the artist, I've noticed that you fall in love with them on a deeper level. So, like, now you're not just a fan. Like, you feel like family. So whatever that per artist does, you just want to support. You want to go with them because you understand them. Like, it's like a connection. So but that was my they're goal. They're human, right? right? They have stories. Right. And, yeah, and sure. that was my goal, to make sure that these local artists was represented the right way because... I've been around so many artists and they're so hungry and they're such good people and like I just want to display their stuff like they and uh, and uh, Buffalo is a really tough crowd like so to tough please. so, so tough <laughs> I'm very like, tough crowd to please they but are. like honestly like kudos to both of you ladies because and I this is like one of my sayings that I tell my students right there's three kinds of people in this world <laughs> there's the people that make it happen which you two oh, some of these say this make it happen. <laughs> there's the people that um, watch it happen, and there's the people that don't know what the hell happened. All right. <laughs> well, that's a real and, life and more. And kudos to you because you guys have literally made it happen. 
you just didn't sit there and watch it, right? You watched it and, it, and, and you were inspired, but then you actually took that step to make it happen in your own lives. And then you both have carved out platforms because that's what I love. That is, I think, one of the, the, the highlights of Buffalo and one of the reasons why I moved back here. So I spent some time in New York City in the fashion industry and then moved back here was because I really like to be a big fish in a small pond. I would say like at 25, would I have been producing fashion shows at the Met? At 25 years old? No. But I produced a fashion show here at the Albright Knox. You know, and so it was a small community and I was a big fish in a small in a small pond. So like and, and that's right? It's just so, make you know, it it's so funny. I had went to New York. I was, I was really dumb. I went to New York, because um, I went to Bo State, so I had a lot of friends out, you know, that were in New York. And I went to New York and I was there for a summer and it let me down really bad. And someone had told me that. They were like, Why don't you just be a big fish in a small pond? And and that was one of the things that really got me to start like okay start where you are like yes. you don't have to go somewhere else to start start where you are where you already have a bit of knowledge base but i, I really you have from the scratch network. yeah you know yes. here because i didn't i didn't know anything but i was fascinated and i think another thing too is that everyone has a need and you have to find a way to make your need to identify your need and make it something where collectively everyone will benefit because i think for me was i really didn't have any pride in Buffalo. I remember the first time like I really got fascinated with the culture in Buffalo was shout out to Shane Dupree. He he left Aww, now. Oh Shane both on the um, I know. Battle at Buffalo. I yes. remember I, I, I remember when YouTube started. And my dad <laughs> my dad has like there's so many integral moments with my dad that I remember. I remember when YouTube started and we would watch stupid funny videos on YouTube and I remember my dad came by and he was like if you're going to watch YouTube, watch something that's productive that is going to help you. You're going to learn something. And I remember he said that, and I felt so bad. And so I love to dance. So I started watching dancing videos all the time. And then that that got me to like, okay, let me see if there's a dance studio around. Or like a hip-hop dance studio. Yes. And uh, Verve came up. Verve. And I started go. Legends. I fell in love with Verve. I would go to the Battle at Buffaloes. I would go to oh, the, they were the, best. the Saturday Night. The Saturday morning freestyle sessions every Saturday. <laughs> Hopped in the train to go to the Saturday. I it love was it. Amazing. So much history there. But uh, yeah. shout out to Shane because he his studio was what sparked like my interest in Buffalo and like yo, there's a culture here, right. and I wish I would have identified it with it just a little earlier because it wasn't until like late high school going into college that I had it. But once once I saw what was here, I was like, oh man, my fascination just got, got bigger and bigger. I love that. Oh, that's dope, man. That's, there's a lot of history here, Sandra. There is. There's uh, so much. You know, I remember the first time actually meeting you. I was actually at an event with Aaron. I think it was at the Grandmaster Flash oh, event. Yeah. That was like yeah, you and you were saying, the reason I'm bringing it up, <laughs> <laughs> the reason I'm bringing it up is because you talked about dancing. You said you like to dance. You was out there shaking the tail feather. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you was. You and my dad, we were just like, okay. We were, yes, we were so excited. Dad, yeah. First of all, I love your father. Yeah. He is like the life of the party. <laughs> every yeah. single place that I go to, every show that I go to, he is out there. He's yeah. your number one fan. Yeah, I he's a huge it. supporter. Yeah. I love supporter. seeing that. I remember him at uh, at Bufloof, uh last mm -hmm. year. Oh yeah, yeah. Him setting up your table and getting everything all yeah, like ready. Yeah. And I was just like, that is just mad love. That's, That's dope, so man. so incredible to see. So the, the support. support. Yeah, so the support has always been there from your parents, obviously, oh, because of... Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, especially with my dad, because my dad is, like, a music person, and so I st I have that same, like, music... Uh, we listen to everything, like... I Like, he always had turntables. We, okay. we, when, before I even could talk, I would say... Zug, 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 you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, um, he always had turntables in the basement playing, played a lot <clears> of Michael Jackson. To this day, 80s music is my favorite era. Yeah. I love hip-hop, but... 80s music, there's something just so timeless about it. Mm, like, do you? It. Okay, so I'm going to put you on the spot. All, I love all different <laughs> types of music, so he really made me, that's why I was going by like culture kind of sort for a minute on Instagram, because he made me like really fall in love with all different types of music. Who's your favorite artist from 80s? Ooh, uh, uh. On the spot. <laughs> uh, what's her name? Where's your love? The love. Da, da. <laughs> they, they I so want your like, love. 
I need. Like ready, you know, ready, you know that. I know you know who it is, ready. I want your love. That's the joke. That's the disco era, too. That's the disco. Yeah, like yeah. Um, it starts with a C. What, what are they called? What, what's the name? <laughs> chic, chic, chic. Chic, yes. I know he knew. I'm telling you, he, he knows it. Chic, and also, uh, uh, what's the other group? Uh, get ready, baby, tonight. Uh, uh the, 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 Shalimar. The, Shalimar. Yo, chic, again. Shalimar. Yo, ready's on it. Yo, ready, 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 yo, 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 mama, he on it. I'm talking about I love 80s music. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. Well, and what about you, Neff? You like 80s music? I like all music. You like, so who's your, who's your favorite artist then? My favorite artist is like... All time. Favorite. Dead or alive? Um, Biggie. Biggie. Okay. Biggie Smalls. Okay. Uh, okay. My, my family is also from New York City. Okay. What part of New York? Coney Island. Coney. Okay. Yeah. I was the first Buffalo born. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a I used to lie, like especially at Buffalo State, and be like, I used to lie and be like, Oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm from the city. Yeah, my parents like, yeah, because I knew like a couple different places. They they definitely knew I was not from Buffalo, but I tried to lie and say I was just a bit. Because the city kids when they come here, they just mad cool and not. I always tell them like they add a certain texture in like Genesee quads. They do. Yeah, they, they really do. do. Especially when they stay here and like and I have been roots here. A lot more are staying here. Yeah. A lot of my students that have graduated, they're like, we don't want to go back to the city. We yeah. want to stay here. I'm like, okay, let's go. Like this yeah. is amazing. It's funny because but New York City people are very uh, territorial. When oh, I say that, I uh, they they love they they will rep their borough and rep their I'm town. Not sure if you say anything got a whole story. Brooklyn, we be taking them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'd be like, Mom. And if you live outside, so I was in the New Jersey area uh, for some time, and I moved out to the suburbs of New York. So I was out in Westchester County. Anything, oh, Westchester, anything outside of, anything outside of the Bronx? Yeah. Upstate New York. I'm like, hold up. The Bronx is literally the next, the New Rochelle is the next town over. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. as upstate New York. I'm like, nice, that's still New York City. Not as yeah. upstate New York. So, <laughs> New York City, they will rep their boroughs. I mean, their boroughs are, t you live in the Bronx, yeah. you repping the Bronx, mm -hmm. Queens, Manhattan, like you repping it. So, but you know, big shout out to New York City people. Uh, Buffalo is doper at times, we're colder, but uh, you know, we do have a lot of- Are we cold? But, yeah. Are we buffa cold? That's, that's, what, I, that's what I said, I have it on my sheet here. That's what I was actually doing. Good Which segue. I love, I love that, that hashtag. Did you create that hashtag yourself? I thought about it and I remember I asked one friend, still love her to this day, I was like, I'm thinking Buffalo. She's like, oh, that sounds kind of corny. I was like, yeah, but people are going to know it's Buffalo based something. Like, you know what I mean? And so I went with it and it's called Cut On. And people will say, oh, Buffalo before they say Sneak by them. So, yeah, I mean, don't. I guess it's working. The branding is working. Yeah, never let somebody stifle your creativity. Not anymore. I used to have that issue before, not anymore. Like, as soon as I have an idea, I'm like, I know what I'm doing. I, will, I always still ask, like, you know, what do you think? I'm always trying to ask people, like, what do you think? What do you think? Like, how do you feel about it? Mm -hmm. But when I have an idea, I know, like, what's in my head, and I know how, you know, how it looks. I think that's one of the things I really like is, like, curating something and, and sh presenting it in a way that people are intrigued. And Correct. That's one of the things I yeah, really like. Yeah, and that's a dope trait to have because a lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times that uh, somebody may not understand your creativity. You may not understand because sometimes you can't yeah. put it in words. Yeah. It's an emotion you feel. It's it's a it's a feeling. You, you, I'm sure the same thing. Now yeah. what you're doing. It's a feeling that you have, and it's undescribable. But yet you know in your heart of hearts that it's something that you feel like is like you said when you create it. When you curate it, it's gonna come out amazing yeah. because you just felt it a certain way. Um, so that's a dope thing. So we're actually gonna get into we're gonna get into some fun facts. Okay. About, we should say what our. Want to say what? Well, what song are we doing tonight? Well, hold on. We, are we going to get in that? We, go, well, we, the, we you kind of jumping the gun here a little bit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there we go. For real? Yo, ready is, oh, yo, that's what, my man is always queued up for a button here, a button there, content. So, we'll, we'll talk, who's the, who's the artist tonight? Who, who's the artist? What, what, what song are we doing tonight? Well, Chandra, you picked Estelle. Yes. Wait a minute. Yes. Wait a minute. It's the song that we're talking about tonight. And the question tonight, based off of that song, is what song do you feel best describes putting that line in the sand? Like, you you know, you're just fed up. You just, 
it's, it's something that you just can't take anymore. You put in the line of sand and you chose that song. Why that song? Well, I think that it was, we all interpreted it a little differently. Okay, which is when great. When you said line in the sand, I thought of like boundaries. Okay. Like, um, having boundaries, having like a certain level of the way you present yourself and things like that. And this song specifically has kind of like stayed with me. It has recently, like in the last year or two, it has come back up and like, it almost seems like a theme song mm -hmm. to me in a way. And um, I, I fell in love with this song. And you said it came out in 2008. I'm like, dang. 2008 on her Shine album. When you say yeah, but when so, you say boundaries, what do you mean by we have boundaries? Um, like, cause well, the song "Wait a Minute" is almost like Estelle kind of like flirting with somebody. Like mm -hmm. she knows like who she is and, and and everything, but she like won't cross that line. Like she's like, hold up, wait a minute, like chill. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of mm -hmm. that vibe. So when you said "line in the sand," I thought of like having a certain standard like for yourself mm -hmm. and like knowing what the type of quality person you are. I think that's what I was going for, but that song in general too is just so. This song is so nostalgic for me, and I remember the first time I heard it, and um, just loving it. And there's like a New York vibe to it, like the way. And again, my dad. Um, <laughs> I remember him mixing and scratching to this, okay. and like he had like you know how you have both song like the same song playing on both, so he's mixing to us. Wait a minute, wait. Like he really made it super dope, and I'm like, man, this beat is fire. So. Like, yeah, this song is just, it seems like a theme song for me. Almost. That's what's up. It's always yeah. good to have a theme song. I tell people all the time, you are the music you listen to. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just like the company you keep, you know. Um, <laughs> and music could be very inspirational in people's lives. And that's why we have this show, to curate conversations based off of music and how it makes people feel. Because people yeah. do remember that the first time they heard that song, like you said, Biggie. When you said Biggie, I remember the first time I'm writing down Bailey, listening to Biggie. I remember, like it was yesterday, I remember my mother's car, um... I don't remember that. I had the she had the Chiba, the, the green Noseville Chiba, carry. But anyways, I remember listening to Biggie, and I'm like, yo, that's this took me back. And music can do that for you. And I'm very jealous of musicians because 200 years from now, they we're dead. I mean, everybody's gonna be dead 200 years from now. It's living now, but their music still lives on. Yeah. It never dies. Right. So that's a great thing to have that you know when you create some art that people listen to, it's gonna always be there. It's, 10 times past your generation. Like, it's just an amazing thing. So, um, I think it's uh, commercial time. Commercial, commercial break. Time. 14 seconds. It's only 14 seconds. Rocks. Boom. Real quick. <laughs> Hit it. Ready? We're back. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? What's that? From Polter? Polter? Guys? Polter? Polter? Wow, I don't how you say it? Okay, never mind. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. So, there it is. All right. Really? You missed me that much, Freddie. I love you. So, we got Estelle. All right, so we're going to do uh, some fun facts real fast about her. So, I, every artist we feature in the show, I always like to look up some fun facts about the artist. Sometimes people know some of these things, sometimes they don't. So, one of the things about Estelle is in 2008, uh, she worked with Kanye West for the song American Boy. You remember that? Take yeah, me to the place I want to go somewhere. Yeah, that song hit the top 10 in, um, in, in actually says many different countries, and it was, on the, it was number one in the UK, Belgium, and Israel. That's pretty dope. Yeah, all right. Now, the one thing about Adele, though, Estelle, excuse Estelle, me, Estelle. Not Adele. Estelle <laughs> is she no, longer, she no longer is in the music industry anymore. She doesn't, not. she doesn't produce music Sorry. anymore. She retired in 2012, a decade ago. 2012. Wow. However. Well, she's still. She's still writing, though. But she won't say who she's writing for. She still writes behind oh, the scenes. Secret. Yeah, 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 yeah. Could be, yeah. So she's writing for. She's right. ghost writing for a lot of artists in the UK and also in the United States. Okay, because she is. She's British. Yeah, she's British. What I always love about yep. Estelle is her, her British accent. Yeah, yeah. I can't even do a British accent. Speaking but. of that, her voice acting. Yes. She, right. That's what yes. she's doing now. She's right? doing voice acting what's, now, yes. What's her. Uh, uh, Steven, you, anybody ever watched on Cartoon Network Stevens, uh, Steven University? I tried to get. A universe, excuse me. There's like a cult following of people that love Steven Universe. And I tried to get into it. I watched a couple episodes and it kind of lost me. But I see the demographic that it's for. Yeah. I see why they like it. Yeah. yeah. So she's been doing that thing for the last six years now. Yeah. So she's doing she's the. She's hanging out at Comic Con. Com oh, yeah. yeah, that's. Pretty, yeah, that's no, it's a, uh, yeah, it's, hey, yeah. It's, a very, uh, you ever yeah. been to Comic Con before? I have 
I've never been to Comic Con, but anybody I've been, ever been to, to Comic Con before? No. Near when <laughs> Comic Con is going on, and I'm riding in the elevator with all these furry. You're in Buffalo, or New no, York City? This was, it was the Javits Center, right? To, I went to Montreal. Oh no, Comic Con in Montreal at that time. You got to go to one in New York City. Man. The one in New York City at I'm Javits Center. Oh, it's S- silly. It was, you know what? But respect. Okay, because they those outfits. No, I'm not saying it's, it's respect, but it's incredible. they they go above and beyond. That but are actually designed the design outfits for. It's, to me, though, it's not it's not the outfits they wear. They they try to act like the actual comic. That's not? the problem I have with it's that. It's called escapism. No. Yeah. You, you ain't, okay, let me see you jump off a building because you think you're Spider Man all of a sudden. Okay, well, all right. Well, that's going a little bit too far there, but. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> Any more fun facts about Adele? Uh, Estelle, I keep calling her Adele. Why do you keep saying Adele? Well, maybe just Adele. Maybe like Carrie might say. Maybe she. Maybe she be. Maybe she's writing for it. Maybe she's writing for Adele. Who knows? No, but listen, we should get into it. Let's get into the song. So we're gonna do. We're gonna do some things real fast. So ready? We gotta do it. Ready? Hit my button. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Give me that second one. Ready? Ready. And then the third one is me. Maestro. Hit the button. Turn it up. <laughs> Let's break oh it down. Is it? Is it? Is it? I listened to it, I watched the video. It's not, it's not this on the video though. It's totally different. Oh, okay. The video actually took that part out, I think, the first part. Just because we're kissing don't mean we are just so. No. You ain't creeping and suggesting no freaky little things dance. we could do with the awesome. Why are you acting this? Baby, you gotta let me know. Even when the time comes with me, you sex and so wrap it up, cause I ain't carrying your embryo. Staring at a woman that's up your ass to the floor. I'm carrying your embryo. Hey, you ain't spending it right. Oh, 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 oh
I can see somebody remaking it. Yo, that was a style, yo. That was a tough beat. I, I didn't really listen to it like that before. That was... That, that was, was fire, me either. I never heard that. Yeah, that was that was pretty tough. Oh, we're getting some feedback here. Are right, we back. All right. Yeah, that was pretty <laughs> tough right there. And, um, you know, she's only 42 years old. Mm. Oh, we're twins. <laughs> 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 she's forty two years old. She looks so good for forty two. Just saying. But so you know, good. you know, and, and it's and it's dope too. When and the reason I'm bringing this up is she had a mentor in Kanye West, which you know, John Ka Ka yeah, John Legend. Yeah, John Legend. Yeah, that, 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 the West. video. I think she was with John Legend in the video. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, when you're working with some. I mean, Kanye and John, just those two alone. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of talent between two guys. Yeah. And when you can have somebody's back you up, like those two guys, you got to be successful. I mean, you can't be nothing but successful. Yeah, I hear you, man. Just speaking of backing up, <laughs> I heard still got people backing up, putting dreams in driveways. All right. <laughs> <laughs> 3,700 used vehicles, 35 dealerships in the state, 1,600 new vehicles in stock right now. And 1.2 million happy customers. 1.2 million. Okay. Okay, what's her? 1.2. Yeah, that's our big sponsor. What's her is our big sponsor. In uh, in the month of August, we got a lot of great things coming with what's her. We do. We got some big things. But give us a... Uh, well, who was our fun fact brought to us by today? Oh, so our fun fact Ooh. is brought to you by Trick Art Box mm. is the name. And they've created... 30 plus interactive scenes for you to capture endless fun and memories right on your phone. It's easy to do, anyone can do it, and no experience is required. Just take your smartphone, go across the border to Clifton Hill. Clifton, Lundy's Lane, have, Lundy's Lane. Lundy's Lane, Lundy's Lane, and just go have fun. So Franklin and I, we drove over the border to experience Lundy's Trick Art Box, <laughs> and it was so cool. It's, it's, so you go into this space, and our good friend Ronald, Ronald. right? Uh, yeah, we love about Ronald. That. And you walk in and they have all of these really cool murals on the wall. And what you do is you download this app and you literally interact with the mural and you use this app and it's like a 3D trick art. And so through this app, you look at the mural and the mural comes to life. It's absolutely insane. And it is the first one in Canada. He's, he's, he's the first one in Canada. Yeah. Okay. And of yeah. course, like overseas, like in, in Tokyo and Japan, yeah. like this is like been around for like 10 years, but leave it to, you know. So, like, yeah, so our boy. Take, you know, 10 years to get here. But no, I mean, but it's, it's really like we had so much fun. Yeah, so stay tuned in the month of August because we have a lot of giveaways, a lot of contests. Ron is going to give us four, a family of four pack tickets every week. Yeah. Starting in the month of August. So we're going to have a lot of people go to Canada and get some free tickets to this artwork. Have your passport ready. Yeah, have your passport. Or, or, or a hands license. You can have an hands license. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to do four of those a week. Right, right. And then uh, we also talked about the Bafluv uh, Music Festival. Yeah. Yes, yeah. which is going to be pretty dope too. And we're both for media sponsors for the uh, for the Bafluv Music month Festival. Of August. And we also have some family packs. Month of August, we're going to be giving away some tickets for the festival as well. Every Tuesday, we're going to give away a family four, a pack of four tickets to the, to the festival. In addition to that, we're going to have one exclusive giveaway from the festival every week. Okay. So, Ooh. yes. Ooh. And while we're going at it, <laughs> yeah, hit them with the Real quick, I got to get this off. I got to get all these things off for fast. I want to make sure. Also, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> we're also bringing Boosting Buffalo Businesses back in the month of August strong. And Wes Her is going to sponsor that program. Yes. So they're gonna so actually excited. pay they're gonna pay some people to uh to to, to actually to for the businesses. We're yeah. gonna be boosting Businesses. Boosting and boosting more businesses. Yes, in yeah, West Hurt. What's that? I love boosting the Oh yeah, yeah, and West Hurt's gonna pay for it. Yeah. I love I love spending other people's money. <laughs> in addition to that, West Hurt's also giving us some more money. We're going to do some gas cards. So we're going to give away some free yeah, gas in the month of August. Of, so I mean, a month of August, a lot of giveaways. So stay know. tuned. A lot of giveaways. A lot of money to be handed out. We got that bread. Now that we paid the bills. Now we paid the bills. Let's get back, Let's get to, back to the show. 
Estelle. Yes, get back to Estelle. So. <laughs> no, all right. So, so, no, the song was dope. Okay. So, what do you think about the song? You like the song, Carrie? Well, I, I definitely like the song. It's, I'm, I'm with y'all. I've heard it before, but it seemed like it caught me with a different vibe today. Um, but I know we was talking about drawing a line in the sand. Yeah. Right? Um, do everybody got that line that they don't want nobody to cross? Or do we all set boundaries for ourselves? So we got a, a guard up or something that prevents people from stepping over the line. Like, what is that for everybody? Boundaries are, are that is hard. That's tough, tough. that's tough for me. <laughs> it's very hard for me to set boundaries because I'm so giving. Mm. What's your sign? I'm a Virgo. Do we usually, do we usually? I know that doesn't really line up. Move the, <laughs> do we usually move that boundary line based on the person that we interacting with? Yeah, I think so. I know I do. I know for sure. I'm actually learning to like put some of my boundaries down because I've realized mm -hmm. that, especially like in what I do, mm -hmm. I have to be just a bit more open. So I'm learning to actually just be a bit more open. And mm -hmm. I think I've always been open-minded, but just being more vocal about it and communicating a little more. Mm -hmm. So I'm learning not to be to have so many boundaries where I right. can't experience. You know, right, experience. right. And that's exactly where I wanted to go with it. That's that's what I was saying right there. Like some of us have to. Uh, sometimes allow, I know there's a line there, but do we sometimes allow people to say, hey, let me allow me to step over that line so I can at least try to open up and gain an experience versus constantly having a card up? I mean, I know certain things that people don't want to do, all right? I mean, I get it. <laughs> it's the boundaries of drugs and things yeah. like that, but I'm just saying they open this up relationships and getting to know people. And we just talked about a whole other culture of art and hip-hop and things like that that I'm not even really familiar with that y'all opened me up to and if I had this guard up like hey I don't really I only want to I've got tunnel vision I only want to listen to R&B music or something like that I may not even be open to hearing this and it's a completely different artisan group here that I can learn to to hear what they're about and how they're driving the culture yeah no, and, and you make a good point you know and a lot of times again we can take the power of music and related to our life we talk about drawing that line in the sand and i you know this is a saying you know people will do to you what you allow them to do to you mm -hmm. so a lot of times somebody may treat you a certain way but if you allow it for so long and then you decide okay now i'm drawing the line in the sand sometimes it may be too late because the line has really kind of been written uh, you know put down already but yet you've allowed these things to happen for so long and it's not their problem anymore, now it's your problem because you've allowed it. The person, those people don't change. And you know, drawing that line in the sand, I think is very, it's very crucial. Um, we talked about it too before past relationships in regards to putting somebody on the pedestal. Almost could be a line, same thing. You know, we're going, you know, we're going vertical now versus going horizontal. And what I mean by that is sometimes we put each other on a pedestal, but not knowing that person is on that pedestal. So you may have high regards for somebody, but they don't know what you have them so high up. We don't sometimes have these conversations <laughs> with people. We need to have more of these conversations of, I put you in this position, and the reason I, I, I look at you this way because of X, Y, and Z. If we don't have that conversation, you could disappoint people because you fall short, but you didn't even know that you were on that pedestal right. to well, fall short. That's why communication is so important. Yeah. Very important. And we need to communicate more. That's why He's we have this show. He's looking at me. <laughs> Got him. No, no, no. We need to communicate more because communication is key no matter what the relationship is. It could be a friendship, a relationship, a lover. It could be your children. It could be your parents. We have to learn how to communicate better. And again, with me, I like to use the power of music to do that because sometimes we may not be able to say what we want to really say. But you can play this song by Stale and say, you know what? can't really put this in words but here listen to this song listen, read it while you're listening to it and tell me what you think afterwards you be like oh yeah. you ever you ever do that before yeah I, actually that's my that's my language that's what uh, 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 <laughs> if it's a song that is relative to my situation i am like really good for sending the song to you like, 100 percent asking you to listen to it yes and then, like call me back yes <laughs> but that's real yeah because absolutely. sometimes you can't put it into your own words and that song has that melody has the beat and then you have you listen to the words like yo how they write like some sentences they put together I'm like yo I couldn't even thought about that that's amazing right and you put it behind music like yo that's even even it's even doper now um, but that is a very good way to communicate all to your children sometimes mm -hmm. to your loved ones to your mother your whatever it is 
use the power of music because these artists have created some monumental uh, uh, material that you can use in your life every single day. Talk about putting batteries in people's backs. So true. This song could put a battery in your back. What do you think Estelle means when she says, wrap it up, cuz, because I ain't carrying your embryo? <laughs> That's a dope line. <laughs> wrap it up. She's so, talking about she's not direct. going raw, dog. Yeah. <laughs> very direct. She's drawing a line. She, draw, she, drew, a, she drew the she line. Drawing the yeah, line. she drew the line. Okay. That was one of my favorite lines. She literally drew a line. <laughs> Never mind. Um, <laughs> no, this, this, we got to say that for the podcast. You can't say that on the radio. The FCC will find us for that one. Um, but no, but she did draw a line. Mm -hmm. And again, this song, and I know it was kind of different than what you thought it was, but it's still, I think it's still the same point of setting those boundaries. Yeah. Drawing that line, setting the boundaries, it's the same thing. And again, she did a great job in this song. And this is from 2008. You didn't even know, you didn't even know this song was that old. I didn't know. You said that. you were 12 years old in 2008? Yeah. Man, yeah. like, you feel like music is starting to become timeless nowadays, right? Yeah, there's so many songs that look like songs I listen to in middle school. I'm like, dang, this is a throwback for me now. Like, I'm the person. Like, you know how you look at people older, you be like, they're like, oh, this is a throwback. And you're like, Ugh. and now I'm like, dang, I'm that person. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And but speaking of boundaries, yes. I actually wanted to bring something up. So one of the reasons why I definitely wanted that to come is because. Um, we have Spotlight Series at Larkin Square. Dope. This That's tomorrow? Saturday. Oh, Saturday, okay. Yes. This Saturday, so, <gasps> you know, Billy Esco, With Billy Esco at Larkin Square. And, you know, for Larkin Square, there's not a lot of hip-hop shows they have there. It's nice. And, you know, Billy Esco kind of represents the culture and, like, the new school and, like, not, not even really new school because they've been doing it for 10 years now, but they're, like, the next iteration of this hip-hop community that are solely becoming, like, legends and influencers in their own right, so... I mean, we've been working on this for a while now, and you know, after Ladies First, you guys saw that was a main. That was a dope show. That, 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 was, that was a dope show. And the Arts Collaboratory, you know, we kind of after that, I was so pumped up, and we we talked, and like Spotlight Series is going well. It's been you know, it's been selling out, but we've been doing at Tuneworks, which is a smaller space. Shout out to Omri of Tuneworks Media, and um, we were like, you know, let's why don't we do a Larkin Square? It's a couple blocks away. Yeah, we wanted to do it bigger. We was like. I don't know, like, things started going well. Like, it started to, like, progress quick. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, ah, Chandra, I think I want to do it bigger. Like, And she was like, where would you like to do it? And I was like, I don't know. And she was like, why don't we do it at Larkin Square? And we both was kind of like, are they going to let us do a show at Larkin Square? Like, because <clears throat> since I've been in the game for so long, huh? right, one thing that I've ran into is venues do not rock with hip-hop at all yeah. <laughs> so um a while ago like in 2016 um i met a guy by the name of sean patterson and he ran a company called old Levy, and he he was working with the local artists as well and he was he was running into that same issue so like like she heard about me he heard about me okay. so he i was managing an artist at the time by the name of hitch bernie and he was a part of something called anti-venue and what they was doing was they was going around in local spots just taking it over and performing. So he wanted to make it a little bit more like, you know, controlled. He mm. needed more of people to help him. So he came polish to that. Yeah, polish. Yeah. Okay. So he came to me and he said, your name is Neff? And I'm like, yeah. He was like, I heard too much about you. I need to have a meeting mm -hmm. with you. And I'm like, okay. So he met me at my um, artist that I was managing at the time house. And he explained to me what he had going on. But I already knew because my artist was a part of it. And on top of that, I was a goer, uh, yeah. like, cause all my friends was performing in it. So he was like, I need you to help me. I heard so much about you. And when he told me what the concept was, cause I, I knew they were taking over places, but I needed to hear the story. Like, yeah. I'm, that's yeah, me. Yeah, of course. And he told me, he said, I know you've been through the same thing. We can't get into no, no venues because they don't rock with hip hop. And with that type of music that we do here, like, you know, and we got something to say. So he was like, what we're going to do is we're going to take unconventional spaces and we're just going to take them over and we're going to make them hear us. I was already in. I was just like, That's oh, dope. absolutely. So he wanted me to be the person that, um, you know, added the artist. So I managed the background. Like I did the artist part. Who was going to be a part of it? I added a band to it. Like, okay. and then he was, we did so well in Buffalo. He said, we're going to take it on tour. So we went on a couple city tour. Yeah. Oh, dope. Wow. And we took local artists with us and we went on a couple city tour. So when she said Larkin Square, it put me back, like, in that space. So that space, like, you didn't think you were going to make it? You yeah, didn't like, think I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. And I'm like, 
no, nah, we got to take this chance. Let's just do it. Like, let's just ask. And we asked him, the guy Harry from Harry. Like the Square. Shout Harry out to him. was mad cool. <laughs> we were so nervous. I was so nervous. But when we met him, he was mad cool. Like, he worked with us. We even had, like, had a date with you. But everything worked out. But I'm super excited. Shout out, you know, to the businesses that believed in us. We had, like, a sponsor mixer. And, like, we're sending packages out and stuff. And shout out to Trend Up, Geo. Shout out to... Uh, AI the anomaly get yeah. focused. They were a huge yeah. sponsor. Yeah, like, thank she you. really yeah. believes in us. Like she spent when we had our sponsor with she spent hours with us. So I have That's so incredible. much my my respect for AI is, is at a whole nother level. Because yeah. she She's didn't have to math. she didn't have to spend her time to like talk to us and figure out exactly what we need. But shout out to her, shout out to my family, shout out to H H D H H D on you deck. Yeah, well tell, well, hold on. Tell the listeners what time is this happening? It's Dark and Square. Yeah, Dark and Square. This Saturday. This y'all, Saturday. y'all giving them too much, man. Tell them yeah, where to be Saturday, at, man. Saturday I gotta come nine. too, man. What, what time? <laughs> this Saturday, seven to nine. Mm-hmm. So I know the jazz festival is this weekend. Right after, come by Larkin Square. You know, jazz fest is downtown. Mm-hmm. Come to Larkin Square, seven to nine. It's gonna be a vibe. We re- we just booked Chef Josie of Season Buffalo. She was on Master Chef. Oh, Worked wow. with Gordon Ramsay. Worked under. Uh, Another amazing, amazing chef under the tutelage of him. Okay. She's from she's from Buffalo. She moved to Atlanta, did amazing things there. Now she's back in Buffalo, and she's opening a restaurant soon in the Larkinville oh. area. So she works with like she's worked with Chef Darian. Nice. Um, she's worked with all amazing chefs in Buffalo. So we're excited to have her. She's going to be making her and famous still, tacos. Still, there's tickets available. Yeah. Yes, there's tickets available. Yeah. Okay. Thirty dollars. If you come at the door, it's thirty five. With your ticket, you get a custom Spotlight Series taco box you made what? just for us. That uh, is so Cinnabon awesome. egg roll, lemonade. Like she like made a whole cool menu for us. That um, is so we have cool. we're gonna have a 360 booth, open cash bar, um, Billy Esco performing, live interview. So we're really trying to make it a vibe, and you know, having having hip hop events at this caliber is something. Especially after, like I said, Ladies First, I see like the impact it has and how so many people felt seen because of these events. Like, we just want to keep doing it. We, mm-hmm. we don't want to stop. And, like, Neff is, is a great person to work under. Like, her knowledge of just artists and working with people is, is great. So I feel like like us together, like, we just get stuff done. Yeah, shout out to Omri, too. Omri, <laughs> shout out to Oscar, who's Oscar. the creative director. Yeah. Yeah. Like, all, like, all of us have just been doing our thing, and I'm really proud to see what we have done. And I, I'm really excited. So Saturday, come out. Like, you do not want to miss this. this show up and show out. Oh, what's up? Oh, Listeners, y'all, y'all, hear, y'all hear these ladies right here. They're trying to shift the culture. They're inspiring artists in the community. Yeah. If you are in the area, stop down $30 beforehand. Uh-huh. Go online. They can get these tickets online. Yes, follow us, Spotlight Series 716. Also, sneak vibe in. It's in my bio, too. Um, so you can buy them there. We also have a Facebook event, so... If you want to go to Facebook and search Spotlight Series, the show will come up with Billy Esco. Or if you just pull up on Saturday. Yep. I pull up. Uh, you might not know. Yeah, yeah. It'll be, you know, you know, you just pull up and, and, and pay that 35 But the bottom line is that you're going to get an experience. Yes. Yeah. An experience of these new artists, young community artists in the area, and get to see these wonderful women, how they are really uh, affecting the game behind the scenes, just as uh, Neff had said, um, I think that this is extremely powerful. It sounds like there's an a, a, a artisan community. You guys are networking within that community, and you're trying to bring it to the forefront. It sounds nothing but beautiful to me. Yep, that's dope. Thanks. You know, and you know, you ladies are a little younger than me. A little bit, obviously. Um, a, lot <laughs> a, lot younger, a lot younger than me. And you said something earlier, and I'm just going to touch on something you said earlier. And I, I know this is just my advice to you. Um, I worked in corporate America for a very long time, sales, manager um, roles, things like that, and people will never give you what you deserve. They're going to give you what you negotiate. So never be scared to ask anybody anything. Again, they're gonna, you may get a no. You may hear a couple no's. You may hear 10 no's. But you're that closer to that yes when you hear that no. So don't be scared of the no. So again, no matter what you guys decide you want to do or how you want to accomplish it, go out and try it. All they can say is no to you. Again, but if you're resilient, which you ladies are because, yeah, you, I mean, you go-getters. Yeah. Go out and get it, man. I mean, you don't let anybody stifle. You don't let anybody stifle your creativity. Go out and get it because nobody's going to give it to you unless you go out and try to take it. I went to New York City. 
when I first moved to New York City, call it 12 years ago, I was in Manhattan. I went to this, <laughs> walking down the street, this guy was trying to sell me pickup lines for women for a dollar. <laughs> I respect his hustle for a dollar. And I was like, nah, I'm good, dog. I, I got this. He said, either you're hustling or you're getting hustled. And it stuck with me because he's right. That's the rest of the world. Either you're hustling or you're getting hustled. You paid it so, nah, I should have paid him 75 cents. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, you got to make sure you go out and try to get it because, again, this, 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 especially in the industry that you ladies are in, in the music industry, we, you all hear it is tough. It ain't, they, nobody's going to give you anything. You know, you got to go out there and take it from these people and let, let them know that, that we're special. Like I said, we're going to make, we're going to blow Buffalo up. Not literally blow Buffalo up, but we're going to make sure Buffalo's on the map again in regards to we're going to show up and show out. And uh, again, ladies, this has been a dope yeah, interview. I really great. appreciate you thank ladies you being so here. Thank you for coming on. Um, thank you for yes, thank you. And we're going to definitely push the initiative for you as well. We're going to talk about it. We're going to repost this video here. Uh, for the studio, we're also going to talk about your show this Saturday. We're going to repost that as well. Anything I can do to help out, please reach out to me, Sandra. Thank you. Thank um, you. you know, and you know, we want to be on your show too, Sandra. You know, we want to be on Sneak Vibe one day. You know, <laughs> we, we, you know, we, we want to get on the Sneak Vibe one. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Going. That's what's oh, up. Yes. The podcast. Yes, the yeah. podcast. That's dope. So, definitely we appreciate it. And uh, ready? Thank you for being here today. I never say thank you to you, ready? I'm gonna say thank you to you, ready? Because you were the ready. man, ready? That's what's up. We appreciate you, ready? Um, and, and Carrie and Aaron, thank you for being here as well. Like I said, for all of y'all, y'all could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that. God bless. Whoa, Good night. Whoa, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. What happened? Hold up, ready? Uh oh. If your smartphone oh, okay. is not tuned <laughs> into the Franklin Cracker Show, is it really considered smart? Nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we out. Good job, Carrie. Get ready to get that in there. All right, Carrie, and we're going to end it just like this, I guess, for I guess. We're just going to play the chorus of this. Okay. Take me to a trip I'd like to see LA I really want to Don't be here with you You be my American girl American girl That's what's up